Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van Life and Chill, the podcast. I'm your host, Forrest Stevens. Today, I'm talking with Cassandra, and we talk about how she was able to get into van life and travel to places she's always wanted to go. And we talk about some of the unexpected realities of the lifestyle and some of the challenges that she faced that she wasn't expecting. We also talk about the process of her getting her van built by others instead of doing it herself. And she also tells us some really fun and interesting stories from the road. And I think you all will really enjoy this podcast. Before we get into today's podcast, I just wanted to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this podcast and let you all know about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes. There's always more for all of us to learn and explore and discover. And Skillshare is that place where you can invest in yourself by fueling your creativity through the online classes that they offer. There's a wide variety of things you can learn through Skillshare. So if you have a specific skill you wanna learn like photography or how to build a following on Instagram, filmmaking, any of these kind of things. There's dedicated classes on Skillshare for that that are so comprehensive and really easily digestible. The recent class that I took on Skillshare was by Amanda McLaughlin, and it's called Podcast Marketing, How to Grow Your Audience with a Marketing Plan, Social Media, and Metadata Tips. And the information in there was so easy to absorb. It was compact and concise. I've started to actually implement some of the tips that I've learned in here by developing a marketing marketing plan and starting to actually get a grasp of who my audience is for this podcast here. Obviously, this is, you know, makes sense for me to do this course, but there's so many other ones on here that might be more interesting to you as well. I'm really looking to level up in a lot of fields, you know, especially my creative business fields. And this is how I'm going to be doing it is by learning new skills and implementing them and following through all of the projects and and with the resources that Skillshare has. It's only $10 a month for unlimited classes and the first thousand people to use my link will get one month free. So the link is in the description for Skillshare.com and you guys can use my promo code. You get one month free. Make sure to sign up and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into this podcast. So my name is Cassandra. I am originally home based out of Edmonton, Alberta, but most of the year I am traveling in my Ford Transit with my beautiful wiener dog, Tucker, who is not with me right now because he'd be squeaking all of his toys <laughs> while in here. Um, I work completely remote in the customer service industry, and I'm also a photographer and videographer in lifestyle and travel adventures. So I do anything from like portraits to weddings to travel um, wherever I find myself really for travel, um, doing behind the shoot scenes, filming for companies. And then I also have my own YouTube channel and podcast. Wow. Okay. So you're busy. You, you got freelance work regular sort of employment remotely and and you do some content creation as well so that's that's very cool so i'm curious to know a little bit about your van life experience um how long have you been living in your ford transit for so i'm i really feel like a newbie because it's only been just over a year i my van was done in august of 2020 um so yeah, I feel like I'm quite new at it already, but I've been all the way to Vancouver Island uh, and did just over three weeks over there, which was amazing. Um, so far, the experience is, is everything I wanted it to be. And I definitely went in it with expectations of some sort. So when the unexpected happens, you really have to, it brings you back to reality that this is the greatest lifestyle, but it comes with this unexpected situations too. Um, so you have to be prepared for anything and be a completely free spirit and open to anything and everything that you're going to get yourself into. But uh, so far for me, it's been amazing. And uh, yeah, I've been to Vancouver Island, explored all BC, and I'm currently in Alberta, kind of traveling all over the mountains, seeing the mountains from all angles that my eye can possibly see in Alberta because we have beautiful mountains all year round and um and then come April I'll be going across Canada so from from the west all the way to the east nice okay so you're getting around in the van that's awesome um what were some of those expectations that you had and some of the unexpected things that came up for you for me it was the things goodness when we were in when I was in BC on the island I had the the car breakdown 
uh, like my battery dying kind of thing, um, those situations and being new to a Ford Transit owner. Uh, I don't know if all year transits are the same. Uh, I went from a Honda Civic to a Ford Transit in my transition, so very different. Although I am a much better parallel parker in the transit than I ever was in my Honda, and I'm very proud to say that. Um, but to boost a car, it's just under the hood, it's in the battery, but in a, in a for transit it's like very different than what I had ever experienced so being by myself on the island and I need to figure out how to boost my vehicle that was something unexpectedly new <clears throat> excuse me I'm getting over a sickness um so that was unexpected so it was like navigating YouTube on how to boost this Ford Transit um so that was something and then of course like the sleeping you're always and especially on the island and I think everybody will say this when you go to Vancouver Island depending on where you're going it's not always the most friendly you know off-grid living situation but uh, you have to really navigate and ask, like, social media, ask people that live in a van to find out, you know, where the best places are to sleep. So we had a few, like, you know, at the end of the day, if you just can't find anything, you go to a rest stop because they're usually guaranteed safe. Um, and then I guess, like, the most recent one, we were, I was in BC and I went to stay at a campground uh because we were in the middle of nowhere and had nowhere else to go um and i wanted to plug in the van because alberta decided to like hit minus 40 on us in the winter so it was extreme cold so to be safe i wanted to plug in my van make sure everything was going to be warm and start the next day i went to stay at a campground and long story short my van got stuck in the snow and I was trying to navigate getting it out of the snow. And one of the coworkers at the campground was rather frustrated that I got my van stuck and was insisting that he could get it out for me. Uh, he ended up using his bobcat to pull my van out of the snow, but uh, didn't, you know, I don't know, he didn't recognize that there was a huge boulder beside my van as he was pulling my van out and just scrape, scratched the entire side of my sliding door and cracked my bumper. So hence why I'm home right now in, in Alberta because I need to get it fixed. Um, that was probably the most traumatizing so far experience I've had um, because this is a brand new vehicle, it's my home, right? So when something like that happens and then you have to bring it to the shop and it was like this big thing, but yeah, that was probably like the most traumatizing experience so far. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. And and that is uh, something that you have to contend with when your your vehicle is also your home is what do you do when you have to have to take it into the shop? Um, that's a question I get a lot on my videos, actually. And, and so it, it sounds like you were able to go back to some kind of home base to be able to do that. Or, or, or what was your situation? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I'm really lucky because I do also know of other people that live in vans who this is like all they have or even with their with their jobs like they might have a, a steady job that they either have to go to their employer and say hey this is what I want to do can I bring it on the road and they'll be like yes or no or they are able to or they just completely quit their job and they figure it out. In my case I do have an incredible friend base, family base here in the city. So if I have to go somewhere, I have a place to go in in the city, which is so nice. And then even with my job, like I've been remote um, for the past six years. So it doesn't really matter where I am at this point. It, my job would never, and I have my own, so I would never really know. So I'm very lucky that I'm able to bring my job anywhere anyways. And I have a lot of family and friends here that I can call home. Yeah, that is nice. And, and you in van life, I, I do feel like there's a, a large amount of people that are interested in van life because they want to be able to sort of become a little more self-reliant, but you do also need a lot of support at times in this lifestyle. I've personally found and, and through other people's stories, it's, um, you can't just kind of go off into the woods forever in your van, you know, you, you kind of have to be connected a little bit. Yeah, I really think that a lot of people, even when they message me, like some half, half my friends don't even know I'm home right now. Like people just think I'm elsewhere because, you know, I post so much content of the things that I have with it, with my traveling, but um, it definitely is not just everything you see on Instagram. It is beautiful and I wouldn't trade it for the world, but it comes with, 
I know people that are so excited to get on the road and just go and go as far as they possibly can. I am so close to my family. So for me, I'm very excited. I was very excited. I am very excited. But to leave my family is always hard. So when I come home, it's usually like, hey, I'm home for a weekend. And I'm leaving again because if I stay too long, I'll miss you too much and I can't do that to myself. So even when I go across the country in April, like I'm already mentally preparing, like, hey, I'm leaving. Everybody knows that I'm leaving, so don't make it a big deal when I do. But it, it is an adjustment for sure. And I think it really depends on your relationships that you have and how close you are and, and who you are as a person for sure. But I would say for me, I have so much excitement to get out there but because I'm an empathic person and I love my family and friends I also will miss them and it's hard to leave sometimes yeah yeah it's it's uh part of it there's a little bit of sacrifice that you have to make to to live nomadically for sure this is a quick little interruption from the podcast just wanted to let everyone know that I'm doing a cross-country road trip in our camper van and I want to meet up with as many van dwellers as possible to film van tours for different media so if you want to get your van featured you can reach out to me there's some contact information in the description and i would love to meet up with you on the road and film with you and feature your van so let's meet up uh, you mentioned some of the unexpected things that happened to you but uh, i'm curious to know what were some of the um expectations that you had going into this lifestyle you also mentioned sort of how things aren't like they are on instagram uh did you Maybe you can bring yourself back to, to a year ago when you weren't living in your van. What sort of expectations or what did you think the lifestyle was going to be like then? I think I just didn't. I was so excited to when I first first was going to on the road. My first trip was Vancouver Island. I was so excited to go that nothing even drew my mind of like what what, what are the not so great things that could happen. You know, my car breaking down isn't every it happens all the time but I never thought that it would you know it would happen um my fridge broke at one point was never in a million years even thought about that happening my fuses were were going and I wasn't expecting that to happen either and um Oh, gosh, what else that I like? It's just like the you don't. I didn't think of the worst case scenarios. I was just so pumped to go and like be off grid and and be in the nature because I am like totally like hug all the trees, one with nature. Like I just love it so much. So I was so excited to get in the heart of nature that I didn't even think think of anything else happening or even the things that you know you should have with you that that I didn't like booster cables because um, I was like so excited for everything else. So I think you know. Um, I mean, Instagram, I, for myself, I'll usually share everything that happens on the road for me. Um, but all my work and photography and stuff, like, generally, it's a lot of the, like, nature and the beyond the eye can see, as I would say, type photos and, and filmmaking and everything. Um, but when I'm not filming or I'm not taking pictures, and even winter, when my tires kept getting stuck and I was in the middle of nowhere and you have to take the it's the work behind it like your your van gets stuck in the snow then you have to take my track pads for the tires out and do that it takes 10 times to do that and an hour later you're finally out of snow and you just sit back and you're like man that was a lot of work but no one sees that nobody knows that and and even when my fridge broke unexpectedly uh and then my water pump broke that same day and I was like, I don't even know why. I haven't been very far yet, but things were going. So then you have to compromise and you just make it work. So it's it's those things that you just never expect to happen that you have to find a solution for and then worry about fixing it when you get home or wherever you're going to be next. Um, so, yeah, and I think it's a different lifestyle. And a lot of people will ask me, like, how do you do it? And before I got into the van, I'm already pretty minimal. I don't own very much. I've moved around on my own so much that the more you move, the less you get rid of because you're just like, I don't care about any of it anymore. I just need my things and my dog Tucker is like my whole world. So as long as I have him and myself, we're good. But um, so I didn't own much. But when you get into a van, depending on the size of your van, mine's a mid roof and it's not a high roof so I mean I'm only 5'3 so I can still stand in it but it's very small it's very very small so you have to really get used to living in a small quarters and when I went to the island I was with my boyfriend and he has a dog too so there was two people a golden lab and a wiener dog and when you're all of us in this like 
250 midroof transit it's it's a navigation you have to make room the lab slept on the floor so that's pretty much that's all of my floor space almost is this dog's bed and making sure the dog's comfortable so it was definitely navigating just like smaller everything and you know being okay with being in people's space and everything but it works out it takes it takes it takes I don't know you really have to want this to live in it I would say and be min like a minimalist i would say yeah i guess uh maybe you just answered my next question there but when you had all of these unexpected things happen these problems uh was there any doubt in your mind that you'd made that you know you made this decision to live in the van um were you thinking okay maybe this isn't great or or was there any like what was sort of going on there for you i think when when things started like when my fridge broke and and like my water pump and everything went it was kind of i had one moment where i was like is this god telling me that i shouldn't maybe do this <laughs> but at the end of the day nothing has really made me like question or even regret doing this um i think the biggest thing it did for me was like hit me upside the head and give me that reality that it's it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows and beautiful all the time and most often when we're finding yes i found beautiful places to sleep but it's not like that all the time when you have to work and you need connection and wi-fi like majority of the time you're in a parking lot in the city and you wake up in walmart like that that is a lot of the times how it is and then you know on the weekends you go do your thing so i think it never made me feel like regret or like what am I doing maybe I shouldn't be doing this you know I had that moment once but I was like no no I wouldn't god may wouldn't make me go through all of this and build this beautiful thing for nothing um but it was just a huge reality that like I have to look at it you have to just be completely open and go in it with zero expectations and just enjoy every process that and everything that comes to you yeah definitely and and you have to have a strong purpose to do anything in life and really kind of be committed to it so i would love to hear what were your main reasons for getting into this lifestyle to begin with actually, i actually love this question because it's very personal to me and i think it really started in in nature and travel in general i i love nature like every every time i can submerge myself in the heart of the woods, I will do that. And I totally get that from my father. So I love nature to begin with. I love traveling. And for a long time, I just knew that I needed to be one with nature as much as I could. And I love freedom. I like my own schedule. I like freedom. I like working for myself. I hate working with such a tight schedule and feeling like I can't just go. Um, and I've moved around a lot already, so it was something that, and then I saw van life most often probably do on, on social media, and I was like, oh, I would love to do that, and for a long time, it was one of those things that I've always wanted to do, and I'll probably never get to do it. Um, three years ago, I was in a pretty toxic relationship of eight years, and it was just never an option, because I was in this relationship, I was going to marry this person, and I was pretty, you know, committed to this this particular person so it was just never an option so i kind of went through like this i really want to do that um but it, it's it, it would it would it was never an option in that in that situation so i just accepted that like this is where my life is going to be and this is how it is i'm going to wake up and i'm going to do the same thing every day and this is how it is and then one day i just woke up and was like screw this <laughs> i need to live my life and you need to choose the things that are going to make you happy and do absolutely what's best for you because my dad always says life is too short and it is and it truly is and i just woke up one day and was like no like i'm done like i'm doing it and i four months until i'm supposed to get married and i was like just kidding <laughs> i'm actually leaving and i and i left the relationship and that was like my my clean slate i was like i have a whiteboard it's completely washed off i started my life all over again and was like i actually think i'm gonna do it and i honestly i feel like i blinked and i met the the best people and the right people and everyone just owed everybody a favor to come together to help me find a van and it i just you knew people at the right time i guess but the biggest thing was that i just realized that life is too short and you have to choose you and do what's best for you and do what's going to make you happy and i really feel like i lived that um on the flip side of 
and that relationship was kind of like my realization of like I have to choose what's best for me a huge chunk of my life of 16 years I was dealing with an eating disorder as well and I just needed to be free from everything so when I left that relationship and I kind of freed myself from you know starting to actually heal and put energy towards myself my health my mental health physical health spiritual health everything and was like this is this is all brand new for me I'm turning 30 in the matter of months and was like if I'm gonna do it I have to do it now like no one's getting any older um or any younger sorry so yeah it was like a huge huge transition period for me a few years ago and I just knew I was gonna do it and then it was a non-negotiable like anyone else I met in my life I was like just so you know like this is who I am and this is what I'm doing and I'm going for all my creativity dreams and I'm building this man and I'm gonna go travel my country non-negotiable and I did and everyone's been so supportive so yeah that's how it happened <laughs> wow that's really an amazing story uh that you've got there um so y you kind of got right up to that point of of getting the van and it sounds like you had some help getting the van but what was the actual build process like for you and how involved were you and how much did you get any help or or how did that sort of come together oh man honestly i i envy the people that do it all by themselves and there are women out there my age that do it all by themselves and i don't know how they did it but i i kudos to all of them all of you all of you so i when i first started looking i was going back and forth between buying an already converted vehicle um because it's one cost so i'll just save as much as much as i can and just buy something that's already done um because the option of saving to buy a van and then saving to build a van and then I didn't even know anyone to build a van at the time so I had no resources and then um the, my boyfriend the person I'm with now we were just like chatting and and he was kind of looking and he is like new to everything I, he just like he walked into my life and I was like here's van life welcome you're involved now so he was like searching and and then uh you know, I was, I found vans that were already converted, but nothing really resonated with me. I had a vision in my mind of exactly what I wanted my van to look like. And I also just wanted something that wasn't already lived in. I wanted something that had my energy in it. I don't know what the person who owned it before, like, I don't know what they did. Maybe they hunted in it. I don't know. And it's just like not there. It's not my energy. And I wanted it to feel like mine and clean and whatever. So I was like, man, I'm not finding anything I like. And I, you know, I was just going to save as much money as I can and hope that something fell into my lap kind of thing because I had a zero plan. And then it just kind of through conversation was like, why don't you just consider buying a van? And we'll, and then my, my boyfriend, Steve was called up a buddy of his of 10 years who he hadn't spoken in years and he was a general contractor. So he built homes, but he's never built a van before. And he's like, Hey, my girlfriend wants to build a van would do you is that something you want to take on and he was like okay like i've never built a van i only build homes but let's do it so that kind of was like this the strike to my brain of like oh maybe i i do have a builder now maybe i can build my own van um and then i needed somebody to do the electrical portion because that was obviously some because home electrical and then van electrical very different very similar but very different and if you've never done it before that was something i really wanted to make sure i had a company or someone to do it the right way and through the facebook and instagram community of people in my area looking for vans uh, i did meet a girl who is now my friend who used somebody in uh in canmore to do her van and I just connected. So long story short, all my electrical and my water system was done in Canmore, which is about three hours away. So I ended up finding the van in BC through somebody who owed somebody a favor, who owed somebody a favor at a dealership, and we have a van. And it was the perfect, it was, I have the perfect van. I wanted a certain budget with certain kilometers, and I got... I got, I saved like $10,000. My kilometers I wanted very low and it was like just under 9,000 when I got it and it's a 2020. So it was like brand new. So I was very, very grateful, which is so unheard of. And I didn't, I, I couldn't say no. And I was really like humming and hawing between mid roof and high roof. I'm only 5'3", so it wasn't really no different, but I wanted to have a, as much space as I could. Um, so the only thing that I had was the mid roof with the lengths that I wanted and everything. So I was like, sold, I'll take it. So I found it in BC. I ended up getting it shipped here. And uh, 
and then I contacted this company in Canmore and I would I drove the van back and forth to Canmore probably five times to get electrical done and then I'd bring it back and then uh, our friend who did my actual build built it in his driveway um, because he doesn't have his own shop but he's an incredible woodworker and everything else so he did everything in the summer uh, in his driveway and he would do a little bit of he would do like the framework and then I'd have to bring it back to Canmore to get this done and so it was a lot of back and forth the whole process was stressful <laughs> that's why I'm like whoever built their own like kudos to you and I think honestly for me it was only so stressful because I am a perfectionist and I like to take control of situations and I researched everything like I know a lot about van builds because I was like I have to know how to do this on my own even though I'm not doing it on my own I have to at least know so I researched everything um, to do this on my own and then kind of gave the like vision to my builder and was like, this is how I want it. I picked out everything and there's pros and cons to like taking control of a situation and then just being completely naive to how a van build should be. Sometimes it's just better to not know and just like let let the builders just do their thing. But um, yeah, it was it was stressful because I was going a lot back and forth, driving a long distance to do certain things and then... My builder got sick for a month and it was just like there was like a lot but in the end it turned out perfect and i love it <laughs> so it was good that's awesome so what are what are some of the specific uh components that you put in your van like how much power do you have what's your solar and maybe just if you can give me a little bit of a run through of the layout as well i wanted the fixed bed layout um so i have a completely fixed bed it's almost a queen size and underneath my bed, I have three compartments for like complete storage, which is awesome. So underneath my bed is my, I did the the clean water and the dirty water jug. I don't know if I would do that again, but that's what I have now and it, it works. So I have two 25 liter clean water jugs um, underneath my bed. The pump goes to my sink, of course. Um, so I have the bed and then on one side where the sliding door is, is where my sink is. And then the other side, it's a complete, um, like, kitchen counter. Um, my And then my batteries. So I have 400 watt full solar on the roof. Um, so four panels up there. And I had that many panels put up there because in my mind, when I was first building the van, I was going to do induction. And I was going to have an induction stove built into the, the counter of the van and... It, and like you need a lot like your induction will take the most amount of power away and it's funny because a lot of people that I knew were like I don't want I don't want butane I don't want propane I don't want anything that's gonna blow up and that was my mindset like I don't want any can that's gonna blow up in my face because I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I trust myself and then I went to go use my induction stove and it didn't even work because my power still wasn't enough for my induction stove and I don't even know if that's like a right or wrong or there's something wrong there but um, I have a 2000 watt inverter uh, my batteries I honestly just got replaced because the first ones from Canadian Tire did not work so I can't even tell you right now what they are because they're brand new um, but I have the everything else is 12 volt my fridge is 12 volt a Dometic fridge amazing Dometic is amazing um, some of the things that I did my power when I first built the van wasn't built sustainably for me to live full time so I'd go away on a weekend and things like my fridge broke and my my uh, water pump everything broke because I didn't have enough power to sustain everything so when your voltage goes low enough and I drained my battery so low um, because when I first started in van life you have to turn your inverter off people and I did not know that and my inverter killed my batteries three times and then everything else just died because I didn't know so now I know, but because of that, um, I had to get things replaced. So I ended up going to uh, an amazing company in, in Calgary who just basically looked at my electrical setup and was like, this is not going to sustain you full time. And they ended up uh, replacing some of the fuses that needed to be stronger. And I used to have four. Yeah, I used to have four batteries and now I only have two. Um, but the batteries with the, everything has to have an, like the amount of power and the fuses all have to support each other. Um, and mine just weren't at all before. Now they are. So I have, um, larger fuses. I, I think I'm trying to remember, I can't even remember what my fuse 
fuse uh, power is. Ew, I know it was 60 before, which was not enough, but um, I have the two batteries and then my 2000 watt inverter. Everything else is 12 volt. Do you have a heater? Yeah, I have a heater. I have the Webesto heater connected to my gas tank. Um, yeah, I chose that one. I didn't want diesel. I didn't want to have to worry about, or sorry, propane. I didn't want to worry about filling up my propane for my heater and I don't have a diesel vehicle. So yeah, I have the Webesto ATC 2000 for my heater and it works great. I absolutely love it. Um, I was a little skeptical because it was connected to my gas and I was like, I don't want to blow myself up, <laughs> but uh, it works perfect. Um, I And then my fridge is ginormous. And when I mentioned when it broke, when my fridge broke the first time, it was like so dramatic because when you're building a van, you you have to budget for things. For me, I worked and then would pay for things and work and then pay for things. And my fridge was, my priority with the fridge was my dog's food because my dog eats raw. So everything has to be frozen. So it had to have a decent sized freezer, especially if we're going to go across the country and like go into the States and stuff. So, um, my fridge was the first tears I cried because it was so expensive. And I was like, why does a fridge have to be so expensive? Like why? I, I, I couldn't understand the logic, but at the end of the day, it's because it's 12 volt and I wanted a big freezer. So my fridge is huge. It looks like a toolbox and it has a fridge and a freezer. Um, now that it's here and I love it because it sustained two dogs and two people for three weeks on the road. So it's totally worth it. But, um, yeah, it's ginormous. Nice. Nice. So yeah, I'd love to get to know you a little bit more because I'm always curious about the types of people that end up living in a van. So what was your kind of upbringing like? And, and do you think that it had anything to do with you living in a van now? Um, that's a good question. I think, no, I don't think my upbringing has had any, well, maybe it does as a type of person. I almost, almost grew, grew into be. So growing up, I, my parents split when I was young. So I lived with my mom most of my childhood. Um, I was a gymnast from a young age, obsessed with gymnastics. So I've always been super outgoing. Um, I'm a huge feels person, very sensitive, very empathic. And I, I love outside and being outside. So, um, but growing up, I was gymnastics, eat, sleep, breathe gymnastics. So I, I did gymnastics until I was 19. And then I transitioned into the sport of cheerleading. A lot of my upbringing, um, I grew up in Ontario for most of my life, um, lived in Nova Scotia for part of my life. And then I went to college in, in Ontario. So, um, after gymnastics and elementary school and high school, I transitioned into cheerleading and then cheer was really what brought travel more so into my life because I traveled with my team. So I did high school cheer and then all-star cheerleading. And then through all-star cheer, I went into college and did college cheer. Um, and then I ended up coming to Edmonton summer 2012 just to work because money was really good at that time here in the city and I wanted to work and make money for school. Um, but I also, but I wanted to keep training because I was like pretty high up in that career of my cheerleading career. So I wanted to keep training while I was in Edmonton. And then I ended up falling in love with the cheer community here in the city. I graduated college and then moved to Edmonton, um, for cheer. I did all-star cheer, competed at the world cheerleading championships for six years and then ended up doing CFL. So I was with the CFL for five years. Um, and cheered with the Edmonton Eskimos. And then when they won Grey Cup in Winnipeg, I, I, I don't know, hung up my cheer shoes and retired, got my Grey Cup ring and was like, okay, that's good. <laughs> um, so a lot of my upbringing was gymnastics and cheer. I was that, I was that obsessed little gymnast and cheerleader. Um, but I was very, very close with my friends. Um, I did struggle a little bit with with the eating disorder stuff in in my upbringing as well so that between that and healing around that and really understanding how important mental health is and how and being an athlete as well um just being grateful that i can move my body every day and have and how important health was in college i went to school for fitness and health promotion i wanted to go work on cruise ships before i moved to edmonton and that's the direction i was going so i think travel's always kind of been there because i was going to go work on a cruise ship and 
and like be amongst people and be something in activity because I think body and movement and mental health and physical health is so, so important. Um, so my direction was going to be the cruise ships. Then I ended up moving here to Edmonton. And I think being going from Ontario to Edmonton which, or Alberta, I should say, is so different. Like Alberta is mountains and nature and the people are vibrant and I just fell in love with it so I think travel has always been I would take uh, my family's jeep and go car camping in the mountains with the jeep and I, I feel like that's a lot of times how it starts for a lot of people is they just like build their car put a mattress in there food whatever and then go and and I, when I I think two two years ago in the summer, I just traveled all along the mountains in in my Jeep and was like, no, I need to make this. I need to make this a thing. And it would be much more enjoyable if I had my home and everything with me. So, uh, yeah, I think it's always been kind of part of my upbringing to travel and and to be one with nature. And I think my experience has really built me into who I am now of uh more of the hardships, I guess, that, that build you up as a person and really show you in life, like, what's important. And I just got to a point, especially, you know, I'm I'm in my late 20s, and part of me wishes I would have done this so much sooner. But, uh, yeah, I was like, I need to do it now if I'm going to do it. And, yeah. So you mentioned a, a few times mental health and how that's important to you. I'm curious, like, how how has van life impacted your mental health specifically? I think, it, again, it goes, like, back to I want to say freedom but just like being yeah like having the freedom to be in your own space in in the nature will heal and help everyone and when I'm embedded in the mountains or in the middle of a field or somewhere new even if it's not like a service road on a dirt road but it's somewhere new it 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 does something to my soul that makes me feel so happy and I honestly almost feel when I go back to a city I feel different like I'm I'm just so much happier in my van with Tucker my dog in the midst of nature where we can just like open the door freely and just like let the air in and walk freely and uh honestly I just feel so so at home when I literally have my home with me and I'm in in the midst of nature um, it's just like a different vibe. I'm I'm a I'm a country girl. I didn't really necessarily grow up in the country, but I don't belong in the city where your arms reach of your neighbor. Um, so I will end up one day in the country with with some animals. But uh, yeah, it's like in my blood. <laughs> nice. Uh, one little note on the van build that we didn't cover is uh, what is your bathroom situation like? Like uh, with showering and and toilet. I do have a the mini porty potties. I think it's called porta potty, and uh, it's it's small enough that it can fit right under my bed, so I don't keep any of the like liquids and okay, well, like the sterile liquids in there um, under my bed so that it doesn't splish around. But when I'm by myself and traveling with the dog, I usually just pull it out when I need to go, um, and then uh, so that's like majority of the time what I do because it's small enough that it can store so perfectly and honestly I highly recommend it like it's really really easy impact if you have a build where you can just build your toilet right in there then honestly if I could do it again I probably would have done that um but at the time of my build when there's so much going on and there's decisions need to be made this was one thing where I was like I don't care I'll figure it out like I'm just gonna get this porta potty it's gonna store into the bed it's gonna be great and now every time I have to use the washroom I have to like lift my bed mattresses up pull this thing out of the bed put it on the floor do my thing and yeah so would I do it differently maybe but um I, I honestly do love it and then in <clears throat> when uh I don't know, in the middle of the night when you have to like go outside to pee and it's minus 40 and you're like, I really don't want to go outside. I did buy this, it's called a female urinal and it is essentially a female urinal that you put into a bottle and do your thing. Um, it, again, this lifestyle, you, I, you have to be ready for it because did I ever expect to be standing being in a urinal in a bottle? No, but you know what? When it's minus 40 outside and you don't want to squat down there and do your thing, I will take it. So that was like a godsend this this uh, this winter. So that's usually what I do. And then my shower, love my shower. It it's a I was gonna go with the the shower bag, um, and that's what I was was using for a while. And then I actually just changed to a 
it's almost very similar to your home shower with the shower hose that comes up and it it can like hook up to my van window or it can t hang up on a tree and it comes with a water pump that you just put into a bucket of water so if i fill the bucket of water with warm water turn the pump on put it in the water and then it's just like a shower at home that is nice um and then all of those would be like remote if i'm in a city and they have in any time fitness which is a lot of times what people will do um anytime fitness is great because it's literally all over the nation so if if it's where i am at that time then i'll usually do gym shower washroom at anytime fitness yeah that that's awesome yeah those um those pump showers are good and it's nice that you can be able to see kind of your water levels as well like we have a motor home and when we use the shower it's like okay are we gonna run out or like we kind of have to like go underneath the cover to look but you know, if you're if you just have the bucket there, you can see as you kind of run low on water and you can refill it. I think that's a really good solution. Absolutely, and even the the two water jugs that I do have under the bed, like a one twenty five liter lasted us, you know, almost three weeks, and we don't use much water anyway, so it was pretty good. Um, the biggest thing is my dirty water jug is smaller than my clean. So I have to make sure that I'm checking the dirty because then it'll overflow and that won't be good. I haven't had that happen, but yeah, you just have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't want that to happen. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> for sure. What have been some of the most memorable experiences that you've had in your van life experience so far? Vancouver Island was always a bucket list item for me. One of those places that I just honestly thought I'd never get to because I didn't really have a way to get there. Never had a reason to, um, the landscape, I think, has been a huge memorable moment for me. And actually, too, the, the landscape driving in BC is just beautiful. Like, it just literally takes your breath away. And going to Vancouver Island and going to Tofino and Nanaimo, like, those places are, like, next level gorgeous. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And it was, like, those drives where you're just, like, driving and, like, a, on a road in the middle of these like ginormous trees and then the sunset is like something that you only see in movies and I was like I can't believe this is my life right now like this is my life like I I live in the van over there and I get to see this and and just to walk freely on the beach with the dogs like that was a huge one for us um for me and the other one is just you know finding those those really unique cool places in Alberta where uh, you know, along some of the lakes that we have here, finding that wicked spot that's like right on the water where you can open your door. There's tons of those here in Alberta. And when you find it, you just feel like you just won the lottery. Like you found the spot that nobody but everybody probably knows about and you are here and it's awesome. So I think some of the places that I've actually been able to stay at and get to um, and honestly just see, like I've seen more of bc in the past year than i have my whole life and that's all because of my home and i i'm very excited to go across the country because you just you can get to more places it's more it's more hidden it's very safe um so yeah probably the landscape and the places that i get to go to in a short period of time that i never thought i'd get to go to at all yeah that's awesome yeah there's so many hidden gems out there that you can find with a van and it's funny you mentioned actually two places like that I used to live. I I, uh, I grew up in on an island off Nanaimo. Oh, amazing! Uh, lived there till I was eight, and then lived in Nanaimo for a couple of years. And then as a young adult, I lived in Tofino for a few years as well. Oh my god, I'm like jealous. Yeah, when we went to the beaches there, oh, like you you can't like a picture does great justice. But like I just remember on our last few nights standing in uh long beach and i was like the, like the sunset is like it's just, i can't even describe it it's literally if you it's wild it's so wild and and it's just like breathtaking it makes you want to cry like it, it literally is the best and the nature there is incredible it's like a rainforest like a moderate rainforest it's just like it's so crazy i, I love that place i can't wait to go back yeah and it's like and only a drive away i was like i am only a drive away from these places like yeah, it's definitely a place I'll, I'll be going back to for sure. That's cool. Have you ever gotten the knock before? Ah, no, almost. I'm honestly praying to God I never do. And honestly, don't even know if I would hear it because um, <clears throat> in my van, I built a 
I call it my, my pocket wall, but it's essentially a wall built between my front seats and then my home living space. And it is like, it is all custom built. So it's like solid, solid wood. So I can't hear anything. And then I have a pocket door in the middle, just enough for me to like go in and out. Um, so it's just like a home door it has a lock on it and stuff, but it is made out of thick, solid wood. So if I did, I wouldn't have heard it. Um, but I do have a security system, uh, and like I do have cameras, sorry, in the van. Um, so I haven't yet, because I have stickers that say smile your own camera, just to let everybody know. And therefore it's worked so far. I've had a couple times where uh, a friend and I were staying along one of the lakes in Alberta and this car in the middle of the night, like I was in an open field, like they could have went anywhere, but they drove right behind, like right behind my van in, uh, at the corner and stopped and turned their car off and it was like super weird and and so that was like my only like oh my gosh moment where I like and my car was running because I was usually sometimes I'll turn the car on to heat it because it just is faster than my heater sometimes so anyways my car was on and this car came behind me and stopped so I like jumped to the front seat like I can't even remember how I got from the back to the front but I bolted up there so fast I turned the car off I locked everything and I turned the lights off because it was really weird like he could have went anywhere but he went behind my vehicle and kind of just stopped and that was like a heart attack moment but luckily I haven't had haven't had the knock yet I hope I don't <laughs> but those are the expectations that you just have to be smart about where you park and how you park and, and where you go. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, that makes me think like, um, you know, you're sort of, you're, you're a solo female traveler. I mean, safety has got to be a concern for you. Um, how much of a concern was that getting into this and, and sort of what has been your experience in that, in that way? For sure. So it, it I mean, that was definitely something that, I kind of looked at, I kind of looked up to the van lifers that I follow and was like, okay, what would, and then they've mentioned like things that they use or have, and I kind of like mimicked that a little bit. Uh, and then, so safety for me, it's always in the back of my mind. Like my keys are always by me. Some sort of spray is usually by me. Um, and I'll probably lock my car 15 times before I go to bed just to make sure I lock it the first time. Um, so I would say it's it's always in the back of my mind, but the things I think about are like how I park my vehicle, you know, to make sure that if I needed an easy escape that I can just drive forward and get out, out of wherever I am as soon as possible. Um, if I park somewhere and I'm getting there at night, like I usually don't get out of my vehicle, I'll just like park and stay and don't make myself known that it's just me and my dog in here. Um, so generally I won't even get out. Um, and then the other thing, like, you know, just carry have things in the van that only you know where they are, um, you know, to protect yourself. My family, it's not in here. I don't know. I'll probably put it in here. But my family bought me a big-ass taser, and I was like, I don't know if I can keep a taser in here. Like, it's a little aggressive. But, um, so, you know, just carry things with you that'll keep you safe. But, yeah, for safety, it's always in the back of my mind. I wish I could say I'm not afraid, but, like, it definitely goes through my mind of, like, what would I, especially because, like, I could hear someone if they broke into the vehicle and, um, and whatnot, but there's always that, like, what if, like, what if I don't hear someone? What if someone did break into my vehicle and, like, drove away with me in it? Like, I go through these scenarios and then I try to have a plan for each scenario that goes through my head, but, um, yeah, I just make sure that I... I park and put myself in safe situations. Right. Yeah. It sounds like you, you can do the best you can and, and you have these, uh, these, um, precautions that you've set up for sure. So, um, what kind of advice would you have for somebody that is interested in getting into van life themselves? I would say, you know, a lot of, I mean, even for me, it felt like impossible almost, but I almost want to say like, I know that person might not know me, but if I can do it, anyone can do it because I genuinely like, I wanted to do this for so long. And when I first really was like, nope, when I made the decision of like, I'm doing it, I had no plan. I had no plan. I had no idea how I was just going to save as much money as I possibly could and pray to God that he just dropped something on my lap because I didn't have a plan. And I think the biggest thing that I learned that I would tell anyone that wants to get into this is that it's so possible and that if it's meant for you, it'll happen. And sometimes you don't need to know how it's going to happen. You just need to know that you're going to do it 
and then kind of take baby steps of like how you're going to do that. Maybe it's working and saving a bunch of money. Maybe it's it's just joining Facebook, you know, community groups of van lifers and people are, you know, I'm, I'm part of a few and there's a lot of people that are wanting to do this and just like even just want to put themselves in the environment. Um, I read a lot of people are like in relationships and, and but their partners won't support it or like they don't know what to do. And when I see those, I'm just like, it's your life. And, and if you want to do it, it will happen for you. And I'm a huge believer that if, if something is meant for you, you don't need to know how. And you don't need to know when because it will happen no matter what. And I think, you know, for me, like I said, I felt like I was just so persistent. I, I knew I was doing it. It was a non-negotiable. I looked every day at Van everywhere. I looked everywhere for converted vans and non-converted vans. And the right people just came into my life that were so genuine and just wanted to help. So I think, you know, the biggest thing is to don't ever think that it's not going to happen for you. Even if it, even there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you have no idea how, it just does not seem remotely possible. Like do not give up on something like this and, and your dream that you want to do, because if it's meant to happen, it will. But you have to take the steps of putting yourself in the environment and looking for those things and and like the money like make you know source out the money how you're gonna make it even if it's working a job that you absolutely hate but you're doing it for that reason at the end of the day that job you worked for two years that you hated won't matter because you have it in the end so I think just like no don't give up and then if it's if it's meant to happen it will and you don't always need to know how and I think a lot of us I mean even including myself need to know that known because the unknown can be incredibly scary and and you need to know how, but sometimes it's better if you don't and just like let it happen when it's meant to. Yeah, that's great advice. You you mentioned early in our conversation, uh, minimalism. I'm curious how important that is to you and if that was something that was sort of interesting to you before van life or because of van life and and sort of maybe even talk a little bit about like the downsizing process that kind of has to happen to fit your life inside of a van absolutely I honestly think that for for me I grew up in a home with a lovely mother that kept everything from my childhood and I was like I can't I can't I don't I don't like clutter I hate clutter everything has to have a space and I and it, it there's either people that can live in chaos and clutter and then there's people that can't and I was just never one of the people that can live in chaos and clutter and I, I don't like keeping everything um and I think you know for me I I had some stuff I hate stuff but I had a lot of stuff like old gifts clothes and at the end of the day you're gonna have a thousand shirts and you're only gonna wear five so when I, when I first got into the transition of van life and I was like in this mindset of like, and honestly, like I've moved a lot around by myself a lot. And when you move so much, you don't want to have a lot of stuff because moving can be a great thing and like a pain when you have so much stuff. So it got to a point, like even when I moved from Ontario to Alberta, I just fit whatever I could in my Saturn view at the time and just drove across the country and the States and whatever I could fit is what I took. Um... So I think that's really where it started. And as I moved and moved, I just got rid of more and more. But when it came to van life, I, I started to recognize I only wore, like, I have a, I have a lot of clothes. I do, actually don't have a lot of clothes, but I only, out of the not very many clothes I had, I still only wore a few things. So when I notice the things I don't wear, like, you just get rid of the things that you don't wear. And the thing with me is, like, somebody out there could use it probably more than you could sometimes, you know? And I, I'm... I'm totally an advocate for like, you know, getting like going to a shelter, like donating your clothes, right? Versus and throwing them out. I don't think anyone would do that. But yeah, so I got rid of a lot of the things. Um, the biggest one for me of like, holy crap, this is happening was when I sold my car. And that was like, I'm just dedicated. Like if I'm going to go in, I'm going all in. So I, as soon as I knew that I had the van and it was being built, I sold my car. And, and that was like my moment of like, this is my home on wheels. Like I don't have a car anymore and I'm going to have to navigate what it's going to be like to have, a, a, especially when the van was being built, I had no car because it sold so fast. So it was meant to be, it was meant to be. So I sold my car so quickly and it was great, but I did get rid of a lot of, um, a lot of clothes. I sold my car. Um, and then when it came to like kitchen stuff, like in, in my van, I only have like four forks and four knives and I have, you know, four cups 
four plates. Like I have enough that like if I had a guest, you know, if I go somewhere. Um, so I only have in here the absolute minimum and I wanted to make sure that I had more storage than I, than I needed. Um, so yeah, when it comes to like your clothes and all that stuff, like I just have what I, what I need. Nice. Yeah. So what's next for you? So right now I am staying in the city of uh probably until the beginning of april and april 1st i'm getting on the road and i'm driving across the country and that is the date that i have set that i told everyone um you know alberta weather winters are like next level i will never stay here again in the van in winter it's it's way too dang cold it's possible people do it but like when we would wake up and it, we would wake up and see our breath. The dogs were chattering. Like, it, it, it was cold. I mean, we have a heater. Heater worked. Like, when the heater was on, it was good. But in the middle of the night when you wake up and it's minus 40 in the van. And I was like, I can't. I will never do this again. So, that was, like, that was, that was like, in, in my experience in, in winter. Um, beautiful, but too cold. I will go somewhere else. So, anyways. Um. Currently, right now, I'm staying in the city. My van from that damage incident that we talked about earlier is getting repaired at the end, just actually in a couple weeks um, because it's not repaired yet. So I'm getting that repaired. And then, yeah, I'm going to stay here, work, make some extra money, and then uh, head out on the road in April to go across the country. I have family all across Canada, so see some family. Um, But my main goal is to see as many national parks as I can along the way. I know there's 31 national parks that you can reach by road. So in each province, I've already mapped out like all the national parks that I'm going to hit um, as far east as I can. And then I'm going to do Christmas in Ontario with my family. And then depending on the state of the world, I'll be going into the States after that. So yeah, that's, that's my plan. Very cool. Well, maybe we can meet up on the road sometime because we're actually going to be heading west from Ontario to visit some family uh in our motorhome uh oh no way around the same time as you so yeah we'll maybe we can link up that would be fun absolutely i would love it yeah you do van tour great yeah yeah totally we'll do a van tour and uh yeah maybe you can just let people know where they can follow your adventure and your photography work as well absolutely so i have my personal instagram it's crw underscore xo my creative page is crw underscore creative collections creative collections is like my brand name essentially um my website is hercreativefreedom.ca along with my podcast is hercreativefreedom.ca and my youtube channel is my name cassandra ray and all of that is linked into my instagram of course awesome thanks so much for talking with me today cassandra it was great talking with you thank you thank you so much it was an honor thank you Thanks everyone for watching and listening. I sure hope you enjoyed this episode. I think it was a fun and interesting one. New episodes on Thursday and we'll see you there.